I'm Sherburn Lachlan, Director of the Arts Management Program at American University. We are delighted to welcome our colleagues from the National Endowment for the Arts, students, alumni, and faculty of the Arts Management Program here at AU, colleagues from the broader university community, artists, leaders of arts organizations from around the country, policymakers, business leaders, key thinkers from disciplines outside of the arts who are either here or online to this important discussion on how art works. Today you will hear much about this system map and measurement model that hopes to not only set forth a five-year research agenda for the NEA, but also to offer a theory of change model that would allow the NEA and others to better study the arts as a complete system and perhaps more clearly define the value and impact of the arts. Our role here today is to poke, prod, discuss this system map. One of my colleagues called this a giant focus group today. We are delighted you are here to engage with us on this important topic with the chairman, the senior deputy chairman, and research team from the NEA, Tony Ziesfeld from the Monitor Institute, and two panels of thought leaders in the arts. Before introducing our senior vice provost, Dr. Phyllis Perez, I would like to thank my colleagues from the Arts Management Program for their outstanding leadership, particularly professors Andrew Taylor, Jimena Varela, and Anne LeCure. As a leading graduate degree and certificate program in arts and cultural management with a deep commitment to research, innovation, global partnerships, and professional communities of practice, AU's arts management program is delighted to be serving as the convener for this first public forum on how art works. The most important job I have here today is to tell you where the restrooms are. <laughs> so you go out the back door, take a little right, take a little left, and they're in the back corner. Done, just a few steps. Stop at the, stop at the Katzen Museum store, buy things. <laughs> at this time, I would now like to ask Dr. Phyllis Perez, our Senior Vice Provost and Dean of Academic Affairs here at AU, to offer her welcome on behalf of the university. Dr. Perez. Well, good afternoon to everyone. I am so pleased today to welcome all of you to American University on behalf of our president, Neil Kerwin, our provost, Scott Bass, and all of our faculty and administration. And I extend that welcome, of course, to those uh, here, all of you here in the recital hall, as well as those of you who are online, and some of you, I understand, are internationally uh, participating as well. This event today exemplifies the commitment of American University to connect research to practice and scholarship to action. This translation of research and scholarship is at the heart of American University's mission. Therefore, we are honored to be collaborating with the National Endowment for the Arts to host this public forum today on the NEA research agenda and model how art works. This is a unique opportunity for various sectors, including academia, the public sector, the private enterprise, and the not-for-profit community to engage together in addressing important issues relating to the varied impacts of the NEA research model. So a hearty welcome to everyone, especially to the leadership of the National Endowment for the Arts. And I'd like to do a special shout out to my colleagues in uh, the arts management program who have worked diligently in collaboration with the NEA to bring us all here today for this very important discussion. It's now my pleasure to introduce Peter Starr, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences here at American University. Welcome to all. Thank you, Phyllis. For my part in this serial welcome, I'd like to ask you to imagine yourself in this building last Saturday. Last Saturday, we held our first annual Fall for the Arts. Now, many of you are arts professionals, so you know how important fundraising is. You might say that this fundraiser called Fall for the Arts was probably misplaced. We should have put it in spring and called it Spring for the Arts. Nonetheless, we did it in fall. And we did it uh, not as a traditional fundraiser, but we did it as a series of interactive workshops. 
Last Saturday here in this group, in this room, and, and around this in the Katzen Arts Center, there were about 150 plus people learning the basics of Hindustani drumming, learning about Beethoven's genius, learning the art of curator, curation from our uh, AU Museum Director Jack Rasmussen, uh, practicing stage combat. Some of us practiced conducting an orchestra on this stage. We got a sense of something very vital and important, which is the extent to which arts education is holistic and integrative. In other words, we think too much of the arts as being a divide between performers and audience. This was a chance to bring our community here and to engage in the practice of the arts with our students, with our faculty in a very important, holistic, humanistic way. And as you can imagine, it was a smash success. The only part of it that wasn't a success is when I gave a, a stereotypical, dull academic lecture, which turned out to be drawn from Wikipedia in order to set up a flash mob. My lecture was really dull. <laughs> Otherwise, it was fantastic. So all of this is to say we were proud of our commitment to the arts at American University. We're extremely proud of our arts management faculty and students and alumni. And we are very, very honored to engage in this discussion with you today, uh, not only on why art matters, which is the typical question, but how art works. And with that, it's an extraordinary pleasure and privilege on my part to introduce the 10th chairman of the National Endowment of the Arts, an accomplished arts professional, theater producer, policy leader, and professor, Rocco Landesman. Thanks. Thanks so much, Peter. Um, all of us at the NEA are thrilled to be once again partnering with AU. We have a long history of collaboration together. Uh, and now that uh, you and Sherburn had the very, very good sense to bring Andrew Taylor here, which I just got through saying was a huge coup in my view, although I'm a University of, of Wisconsin alum, so I've kind of mixed feelings about losing Andrew for the University of Wisconsin. Uh, but had the great sense to bring Andrew Taylor uh, to DC. I can only imagine that we'll, we will be dealing more and more uh, with each other and working more and more together. Um, Andrew, where is, where's Andrew? There he is, okay. Um, as much as I've loved visiting you in, in Madison and my alma mater, it's truly, it's wonderful to have you here uh, in the nation's capital and we're here together, so uh, welcome. When I arrived uh, at the agency, the first thing I decided was that the NEA needed a new motto. I felt that the old model uh, a great uh, nation deserves great art. Well, you might as well just apologize right off the bat. Um, we needed a new one, uh, first thing, I felt. Um, and it also didn't get to the heart of what we were doing as an agency. So I introduced a new tagline, uh, one that was short and muscular, at least I felt it was, art works, which you see there. Uh, two words with three meanings. Art works referred first to the works of art themselves the paintings that hang in the Katzen Gallery or dance exchanges performances. Art works also reminds us how art works on audiences to delight and elate us, to challenge and confront us, to make us dream of a different future or reevaluate our collective past. And finally, art works is a strong reminder that artists and arts, uh, workers, the workers, the people who create that, have real jobs and are a vital component of our country's economy. We worked with a young designer named Hoon Kim to come up with a visualization for artworks, which you see there. Uh, and then, uh, completely delighted with myself, I must add, I thought my job was done. Bingo, great logo, you're in business. Then along came Joan Shigakawa, the NEA senior deputy, who congratulated me on a great start. She said the next job was to figure out how exactly art works. So I did what any good leader would do. I encouraged Joan to figure it out and get back to me. <laughs> Joan, also being a good leader, immediately turned to Tony Seesfeld from the Monitor Group and asked him two simple questions. What is art? And what exactly happens when art happens? Piece of cake, right? Tony challenged, uh, well, Tony and his colleagues set off um, on a process that he will describe for you in just a minute, and ended up creating the system map that we are unveiling today. 
Like any system map, this one is both too complex and too simple, but it is useful. It serves as a cartography of the terrain of arts research. And at the NEA, we have used it as a lens through which we look at the NEA's own research. We can see which, modes, uh, which nodes on the, on the map have lots of research that hangs off of them and which are bare. And that creates a roadmap for what research topics we should explore next. And when the day comes that we have a piece of research that doesn't fit anywhere on the map, we will know that it is time to change the map. The document that we have created, How Art Works, serves as a case statement for the NEA's Office of Research and Analysis, which has elevated both its work and the field of arts research over the past three years. I mean, Sunil is a tremendous asset for the NEA. I'm thrilled that we are sharing it with all of you today. And since I'm the last thing standing in the way of the presentation beginning, let me now turn things over to Tony Seisfeld and Sunil Iyengar, the NEA's Director of Research and Analysis. Tony, thanks so much.